thank you for having me. And um, I think it is important and significant that the governor tasked as his co-chairs a lead county supervisor and a mayor and that we are gathered here uh, as a city and county together to say loud and clear that this problem of homelessness really knows no artificial boundaries and that we truly are all in this together, the city, the county, and the state, regardless of our specific statutory obligations and responsibilities. Thank you for having me. Uh, I was loved to walk in the middle of it and hear the good people from San Bernardino, Supervisor Gonzalez and others talking about, I think, model work that you are doing. I had a privilege to be down there last Tuesday and see that you're actually doing a lot of what we talk about, which is integrating funding sources and, uh, and being client-centered and in, in getting results. And I know other counties are doing much of the same let me also say we are lucky to have Governor Newsom and Secretary Galley. This is a moment, yes, this is, this is a moment of opportunity because I worked with the prior governors and they were good governors, of the last Jerry Brown, great governor, but this wasn't his issue. Governor Newsom has staked out this issue as a, a high priority and he hired a secretary who in Los Angeles, um, not only advanced the best practices, he came up with a number of them in collaboration with his partners. So this is a moment of great opportunity. And our job, it seems to me, is to make recommendations to the governor about what public policy the state must put in place to make this better. And so I come to these conferences, and again, I only caught the back end of the San Bernardino presentation, but I go to five of these kinds of conferences a month where I hear and we hear the best practices that are going on throughout the state. We hear the evidence-based practices. We hear what the research says. We know, for example, that rapid rehousing is the solution to uh, immediate street homelessness because not everybody is severely mentally ill or dealing with substance abuse. We can get a lot of people off the streets quickly. We know when it, what works when it comes to full service partnership and whatever it takes for those who are more chronically ill. Assertive outreach, intensive case management, temporary navigation center is necessary, mental health and substance abuse treatment and permanent housing. We know it and in fact, we're getting people off the streets in every single county. And yet, there remains 90,000 unsheltered homeless people in, in California. And yes, it is a complicated issue, but in some ways, I don't think we have simplified it enough in terms of acknowledging the role, important role of law and public policy. For when I look at the best practices, the fact that medicine and science have actually told us what to do, and the gap, the 90,000 number, which is the biggest example of the stain on our state, really, in terms of allowing this to continue, it begs, I think, the, mo the most important question we can ask ourselves and that we're grappling with as a task force. Is this a failure of medicine and science or is it a failure of public policy? And what do we do about it? I know my answer. I think it is a failure of public policy because we have not identified how to build what we know works to scale. We have not answered the question how we create the right incentives for the fragmented systems to work together, how to cull and gather massive resources actually, whether it's the Mental Health Services Act, the local propositions that we have and say, okay, how are we first going to get people indoors and not in shelters, by the way, those should be last resorts, but in housing so that they can get the help that they need. I think we have to begin, and I say this often now, and I apologize for those who have heard it too many times, but until we acknowledge 
that the state has a tacit public policy that says it's really okay for people to be unsheltered and homeless, until we change that public policy, I'm afraid that we're not going to bring these best practices to scale and actually show the people of California a demonstrable difference. I am not for New York City's right to shelter because I think that has been imperfect at best. Imperfect at best. They haven't added the services. They focus too much on long-term shelter and not enough on permanent housing. And yet I will say, and I think we must say, the right that they state nonetheless is powerful because 95% of the people are at least indoors. Now, they should be indoors in a much better way. But it is, it, it is driving towards a goal. And so when Supervisor Ridley Thomas and I talk about either a state of emergency or a comprehensive system of urgent, uh, of, of urgent priorities or a right to a roof over one's head, what we are really saying is that we can no longer just be bottoms up. We can no longer just hope that through moral persuasion or economic persuasion or even the development of regional plans, which the governor has rightfully called for, that that somehow is going to change decades of fragmentation and reduce that 90,000 number to something else. We need a legal imperative, a legal imperative to a front door, a roof, something that compels us as a matter of law, as a matter of law, to actually first get people indoors so that we can provide them whatever wraparound services that they need. Upon reflection, in thinking about this imperfect notion, and we don't yet have it nailed down, what the right or the legal imperative should actually be, but I'm struck by some history in this state. And that history goes as follows. In 1967, some 52 years ago, the state passed the Lannerman Petra Short Act which was intended to shut the state mental hospitals and provide a decent system of community mental health care. And among other errors that the state has made over the course of decades, in my view, was a failure to say that people living with severe mental illness living in our community have an entitlement, some sort of legal right, to services. Fast forward 10 years later to 1977, when the same Lanterman, Frank Lanterman, passed what was known as the Lanterman Act, which was intended to say that people with developmental disabilities could live independently in our communities and did not need to live their lives in state hospitals. 10 years later, the state said that population of vulnerable Californians had an entitlement and a right to housing and a right to the wraparound services. And what is the difference? Maybe oversimplified some four decades later? You see what's happening on the streets of California. You don't see many people with autism or related disorders or with de developmental disabilities comprising the large numbers of our homeless population. We must create a sense of urgency by requiring the state, the counties, and the cities together, because the state's not going to open its treasury, nor should it, to say we must first bring people indoors. And how do we pay for it? We pay for it first by looking at how we're spending our existing money. And I'm the guy who's never met a tax increase he didn't like, by the way. Prop 63 and everything else. Prop 63, as to use one example, was passed primarily to address the homeless crisis. And some counties, if we're going to be honest about it, are spending the lion's share of their full service partnership dollars on homelessness, and some counties are not. And with Mark Galley's creativity around drawing down more federal resources and a real conversation around parity, real parity, 
It isn't just about whether you get six therapy visits for mental health issues as opposed to six for physical therapy, but actually defining a broader set of benefits so that the insurance companies are picking up some of the cost of innovation that the public system, you with the counties and the cities are having to pick up. This ain't gonna change, but it can change. Let's define the North Star and make it a legal imperative. And let's bring to scale all that we know works. And if we don't get 90,000 people off the streets, maybe we'll get 75,000 or 60,000 or 50,000. And this will be much better. This is a great moment and a great opportunity and help me and help us wrestle with what this imperative in North Star must be to compel the kind of action that we all want to see. Thank you.